You're listening to Feel Good Astrology with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request a personal reading with Louisa, go to www.feelgoodastrology.com. Hi, it's Louisa Tanner Munson, and I'd like to welcome you to the very last episode in our Saturn Through the Houses series. So, this is Saturn in the 12th house. Now, if you've listened into any of these um, recordings, you'll know that in each of these recordings, I look at the effects of what would happen if Saturn was in the 12th house in your birth chart, and also what happens when Saturn transits through your 12th house. So, it's kind of like a um, a two-part Saturn series about the 12th house, if that makes sense. Now, this is a, a tricky one because um, if you know much about the, the 12th house, the natural ruler of, 12th, of the 12th house is Pisces, um, and it is one of the most, or one of the least understood houses because it's a house of secrets, but not sort of tangible secrets. It's the house of the unknown, really, and the undoing um and it's very highly linked to mental health and um, and the unconscious mind. Like when I think of the star sign Pisces, I think of an ocean. Um, you know, if, if it was a, a water sign, if there was a, a body of water that represented Pisces, it would be the ocean. Because you, you don't see very far into it. Um, you can't see all the issues going on in the waters of Pisces. Most of it is hidden. Um you only see just what the light is shining on really and everything else is murky and we're unconscious to it and it's like that in the 12th house it's a bit like um, your attic or your cellar or wherever it is that you hide things (laughs) in the cupboard of Um, so it's a place where shame guilt and anger live I mean there's a certain amount of that living in the 8th house as well but that stuff we're quite aware of the shame guilt and anger that we might have in the 12th house we're unconscious to so it really does show us or describe to us where some of our unresolved patterns are and the stuff that has come in to our lives possibly before birth possibly during the womb possibly in our early childhood but it's so unspecific we can't really put our finger on it and that's like the star sign pisces you've got fish swimming in different directions um And you really can't put your finger on them. They're really fast and they hide in the weeds (laughs) in the river or the ocean. So that kind of gives you a bit of a clue. So you've got this great unconscious or some people might think of it as the Akashic Records. Um, Think of it as you will, as this just this vast space, this vast infinite space that you like the universe. And then just try and find that little needle in the haystack. It's very, very difficult. And so when Saturn goes through the um, 12th house, it can make you feel very, very reflective and really like you just want to hide away because Saturn can be very judgmental um, and very structured and very disciplined and has great perseverance. And Saturn often shows up in our life to teach us something. And like most lessons, they're not always that pleasant at first. Um, And the, the more we get used to um, learning our lessons, the um, easier they get. But definitely like with your first Saturn return, it's it's harsh. It's harsh for a reason. It's there to teach you where you've limited yourself by choice and how you might want to get free. By the time a second Saturn return occurs, you're expected to have grown and learnt more about yourself, almost like you've written the manual about how you operate. So having Saturn go through the place of the unconscious mind is can be very, very difficult. But if, you, if you're if you used to using the Saturn energy to learn and experience life through and to grow through, then it, it won't be as traumatic. Um, I guess a lot of it depends on the context. Um, if, you've, if you're born with Saturn in the 12th house, you've got a natural um, guardian of your unconscious mind. Um, it shows that you're it's very, very difficult to reach your unconscious mind because there's something guarding and stopping your access. A bit like um, how they have security guards on maximum, you know, maximum prisons. Um, 
if you imagine your unconscious mind is being guarded seriously by a security guard and you can't get into it. So it makes things like hypnosis. You're a tougher nut to crack hypnosis wise, but would really benefit from the um, routine practice of hypnosis and the routine practice of meditation so that you calm and soothe and work with the security card you get to know him you get to know what he's afraid of because Saturn does represent a, a few fears and where we might be feeling so judgmental of ourselves that we can't allow access to this this really sensitive part of our mind it shows um somebody who is quite possibly their own worst enemy um, someone that will judge themselves so harshly that they won't let themselves off, that they won't forgive themselves. So having Saturn in the 12th house is is a very tough position to have Saturn in. Um, it can show quite horrifying nightmares and um, trauma from feelings of being alone, you know, those moments where you might have access to the depth of your unconscious. So I would imagine that um, people with the 12th house um, Saturn, whilst they have a natural reserve and shyness and probably don't really put themselves out there too much, um, I would imagine they keep themselves quite busy so that their unconscious mind isn't given much of an opportunity to express itself or have a meltdown. That said, meltdowns are totally possible because if something aspects um, your natal Saturn um, quite harshly, it could trigger um a deep learning moment for instance like uranus might be square saturn or op opposing saturn or pluto for that matter which would trigger some kind of really painful memory from the past that saturn just can't guard against and open up a massive wound um similarly neptune transiting um saturn in quite a difficult way could cause confusion and um cause a, a feeling of depression Saturn has a dampening effect. So having it in the 12th house shows um, that you probably do have um, a predisposition for um, pessimism and and the possibility of becoming depressed um, here and there, you know, when things don't go your own way because there are moments where you just can't seem to get clear of the sort of negativity that goes that life takes you um on little trips through it's it's not an easy placement i'll be honest however um as with all saturn placements um you can work with saturn um and i would really recommend that a person with a strong saturn in the 12th house uses the energy of saturn to access those difficult areas and to work with those difficult areas um because that's where the real gift comes out so i would imagine very structured writers or poets or people that write about psychology and study psychology and become scholars at it will be unafraid to or maybe not unafraid they will probably be afraid of delving into it but will probably delve into the unconscious mind in a very structured way so that they can manage it so i think the best positive effect of having Saturn in the 12th house is to work with it and to let to work with Saturn work with the authority of your own mind and um, forgive yourself so that you can start delving into the richness because there's a lot of richness in your mind and giving it structure giving it um, giving it a freedom of expression so it can have a happy ending for sure and you can overcome yourself. A lot of it depends on, you know, the transits to Saturn at a particular time in your life. And a lot of it also depends on the kind of aspects that Saturn has in your own birth chart. So natural flowing things um, with planets will make it easier to crack the nut of your unconscious mind. So just, you know, be aware of the power of psychology, counselling, um, different healing modalities, um, hypnotherapy, NLP, any anything to do with recoding and patterning your brain and, and getting sat and working with it, you know, and being disciplined with it. Meditation would be great. Um, I was going to say something then and it just totally went. Never mind. Um, 
if Saturn's transiting your 12th house, then this really marks a time when you um, are about to take a break from being very public. Um, and it can represent a crisis in, in your confidence. Um, for sure, it can definitely describe, um, you know, an energetic change in your life that... Um, that um, causes a slight downward um, spiral where you question yourself and you question what you're doing and where you're going. And a lot of that is based on past pain and um, memories coming up and having the time to remember. I'll share something with you. Um, Saturn went through um, my 11th house when I went traveling um, to mind altering Bali, Indonesia and met loads of new people and really got into the vibe of equality and philosophy and stuff. And then I met my husband on my return and was opened up to a whole massive new network of people and more collaborative things. We did a lot of new age radio and I got pregnant and early on after I'd given birth to my son, my Saturn went through my 12th house and whilst Whilst it, it sounds like Saturn going through the 12th house is, you know, a, a naturally in, introverted time where you will pull back from life. Um, often life will give you the opportunities to pull back. So I was a stay at home mum um, nursing my first child um, and it gave me all the kind of opportunity to have the Saturn in the 12th house experience. So it doesn't have to be um, a really, really negative thing. For me, I was learning about becoming a mum, which meant I was learning new roles and having new experiences based on my new status in life, which was actually being a non-person. Um, you know, um, I lived in a small village at the time um, and my little boy just smiled at strangers um, and I became known as Digby's mum or I became known as the mum of the child that had a big smile. And for any anyone out there I'm sure that has been you know is a parent will remember that you know once their child is born you you cease almost to become to be yourself you become somebody's mum and you're not really referred to by <laughs> your name anymore it's like oh it's such and such as mum and so I had difficulty adapting to that and it was it was a whole new mindset you know I'd always been very independent and um you know, working for myself. And now all of a sudden I was working for this little tiny creature, um, a person, <laughs> I should say, um, and and adapting to it and adapting to it in a quiet and, you know, um, beautiful way, really. Um, I was very quiet and I didn't really relate to the previous life I had and it gave me plenty of time for reflection. And so I, I spent my time going for long walks with him. You know, I put him in a sling and I would connect to my intentions and my breath and really positive meditative thoughts. And I'd go on long walks with him, often breastfeeding on a bridge and, you know, just really enjoying the relaxation of the solitude and allowing life to reprogram my mind and create new opportunities. So it wasn't a necessarily a bad thing, but I have known people that have gone through a depression. Um, and I suppose I did go through a depressive moment as I was adapting to the new roles and responsibilities of being a stay at home mum and having somebody dependent upon me. It's a huge shift. Um, however, the learning that I got from it was great because you learn about your insecurities and your fears. Um, being a parent for the first time brings up all your fears if you're quiet and still enough to notice. A lot of parents, you know, need to go back to work, you know, within six months. So don't often really sit in silence that much. But, you know, it was different for me and I was able to fully <laughs> appreciate it. Um, now, let's assume that that hadn't happened to me. It could it could very well have happened that I just became very depressed or um, felt that I needed to work for myself. You know, it could it could coincide with working for yourself. Like you might be working for other people and being really collaborative when Saturn's in the 11th house, when it goes into the 12th house. I did know somebody who had a very outward career and who, when she went to work for herself, became so lonely um, it, and it surprised her and she had that kind of learning going on. Now, I can't remember if Saturn was going through the 12th house, but that is one 
kind of experience that you can have. So I guess what I'm saying here is if Saturn is about to go through your 12th house, plan your time to work with it accordingly. You know, it might be that you've been planning to get away or have some kind of trip around the world or um, have some kind of inner learning. Um, and if you if you are that kind of person, then knowing that you've got Saturn going through your 12th house is, is worth bearing that in mind. So you can plan your trip to coincide with that. Um, it can mean that, you know, when you're on your trip or when or whatever it is you're doing, like it might be signing up for a course on meditation or doing something, some inward work. It can mean that at first you feel a bit lost and alone and lonely and stuff. But as you deepen into it, it can be a real gift. Um, so I would recommend allowing yourself the solitude and the peace and quiet and the space to get on and examine yourself and make it work for you because if you don't the chances are life will be so busy that you'll burn out and have a a bit of a breakdown and need that space and then it becomes a different kettle of fish you know one scenario has you at the cause and in control of your solitude and enjoying your aloneness and alone is very different I, I really like um what Osho has to say about loneliness. Um, I think he uses the two words. You've got loneliness, which is um, a a real, almost like a nagging, gnawing, cold feeling that makes you feel that you're missing something. But aloneness is, is choosing to take yourself out and have the control to enjoy just being in your own body. So there's the two different... Um, focuses that the Saturn in the 12th house can have Um, I guess where we plan for it and allow for it and just let it happen and embrace it then you're less likely to wind up emotionally and mentally stressing out your health Um, because it could come at a time when your self-esteem plummets um, where you have to adjust to a new thought process about yourself um, and really struggle with that it's also worth bearing in mind that at the end of this transit at the end of this like year or two years or three years when Saturn goes through your third uh, your 12th house that it will cross your ascendant and go into your first house and so where this is heading is that as it crosses your ascendant and into your first house you become a new person um, and you build a new structure for your new identity so really Saturn going through your 12th house is like preparation a big night out only it's not one night it is your life so think of it as I guess you know how women before their wedding day they'll go for pampering sessions and they'll put themselves in the very very best condition they can be for their wedding day and their wedding photos or um, I, I guess like gestating you know you're pregnant and mums usually try to clear their life and and clear their home and get their health in the right state before the baby arrives because when that happens their identity is going to change and they're not going to have time so think of your Saturn in the 12th house as being a moment to really reflect on who you want to be so that as Saturn is ready to help you build your new identity you've got all your ducks in a row and it goes nice and smoothly so I really hope that's helpful Um, it isn't a particularly pleasant experience but if you can use the opportunity with um, wisdom and foresight and a bit of grace and just allow things to happen and and really forgive yourself and um, then it, it's it's a period that you'll probably look back on and think oh that was a dull time however I'm so much better for it <laughs> anyway I'm sending you lots of love um, and if you do want to talk to me about your own experiences of Saturn through the 12th house or through any other houses or anything astrological in fact then just drop me a line louisa at feelgoodastrology.com and speak to you soon take care you've been listening to feel good astrology with louisa tanner munson and this recording has been made possible by all you lovely supporters at patreon to request a personal reading with louisa go to www.feelgoodastrology.com